go. Welcome back to another episode of Rolling Bottom. I'm your host, Zach Moore. We are back for another NASCAR content. Uh, before you guys ask, I'm wearing a hat because I shaved my head. The hair was gone. It looks like, I don't know, like a freaking peanut head. Um, but we're here to cover some NASCAR content. We just got a couple hours ago, the NASCAR Cup Series had practice. This is my preview for Phoenix. I've been a lazy sack of crap this week. I've not been posting my content like I should. When it should be out. But we're coming out with that episode of the day. We're going to cover some of the stuff that dropped uh, this past week. But also going to focus on the Phoenix race. Hopefully it's a 10-minute episode. Let's rock. First thing I want to get through is Kyle Busch going to have some new pit road changes. Uh, he'll have a brand new rear changer, new front changer, and new jack man. Uh, and he's been having some struggles, especially when it comes to Daytona. I mean, he was in position multiple times in that race to put himself in position to win the race or, you know, to, to compete for the win. Um, but just didn't really work out. He was always getting set back by his pit crew. You know, same thing with uh, Atlanta, hurting him there. Uh, he also hurt himself there as a speed penalty there. And then Las Vegas, same kind of things. Uh, pit road, due to the fact of how close these cars are, you know, the pit crew is very, very important. That's how you can gain spots on pit road. So if you're making mistakes there, you're really hurting your chances to, uh, you know, be be competitive and, and make spots up on track. So gonna hopefully this could hopefully help Kyle Busch and overall pit crew performance and overall race performance uh, as they continue in the 2024 season. Last thing, Chris Busher had a loose wheel, wheel fell off, wrecked out. There was going to be a suspension for two crew members, but looks like NASCAR deferred the penalties. Uh, so there's no penalties for the 17 car. They're going to have their full pit crew. No you know, backups in. It's all great for Chris Bush. They're great to have his full team. Uh, so that's all great. Uh, good to keep the main roster. Next thing, NASCAR has held discussions about a possible race at Dodgers Historic Stadium in coming years per sources. One of the options that has been evaluated in the Southern California area. This is interesting. There, Steve Phelps did do an interview in the beginning of this year with Steve Myers, uh, Chris Myers, excuse me, you know, to kick off the season. And he did say that he is ex expecting to have a race in the California area, Southern California area. So it looks like they're still open. And it looks like it's most likely they want to keep it in this area. They want to do a stadium. They want to do it in a very iconic stadium. They want to do it in a baseball stadium which I'm hearing is smaller than the LA Coliseum. So how would this track layout work? It would be sick. Hopefully people will show up. Hopefully they make it the biggest thing again. But a lot of people are making a joke it'll be a mini Pocono, right? I don't know what the overall measurements are, um, but I think this is just NASCAR's way if they want to stay in the California area. Hopefully the Alley Club Speedway gets built and fixed up. They can hopefully have that by 2020. Six because it's not going to be ready by 2025, but this would be a really cool opportunity for NASCAR. They can get a race here, they have the money, they're willing to put the money down. Uh, they put five million dollars to have the Netflix series, so I think NASCAR is open to putting up, open up those big pocketbooks to have a race at this historic steam. I'm all down for it. Hopefully, it does what NASCAR's trying to do and uh, build those new fans. Um, and this would be really, really cool, but we'll see if it all comes to fruition. Now, let's get into the Phoenix race preview let's rock there's 36 entries the two notable ones uh Casgrau is back in the 15 again for his 25 race schedule and then also the 16 uh Derek Cross is back he first race was last year it, last week excuse me at Las Vegas so those two notables no there's no open cars in this race it's with all 36 charts so nothing new nothing different we get into this brace breakdown NASCAR had a 15-minute practice. Great to have a nice practice. That's how practice should always be, a nice big chunk for teams to have freaking time to make adjustments. But it was all because there's, this is the first race in the new uh, short track package. They're going to have a new different tire, different tread compound, more thickness to the tread. Hopefully it helps wear and creates lap time fall off. They have a new simplified diffuser that has two strakes. Instead, the older one had like multiple, I don't know, six, seven strakes, much bigger, bigger, more of a diffuser. Now we have less of a diffuser. Also, they shrunk. They actually, they increased the spoiler to three inches, was two inches. So they had a bunch of downforce, but then they add some downforce with the 
Spoiler, they're keeping the same splitter as last year's short track package. All this was meant to help uh, increase the racing ability, uh, help the cars in traffic, make the cars slide around, differentiation speed. But a lot of drivers were not feeling positive or had any good thoughts. They didn't think this was going to really make uh, a difference. If anything, it would be a small difference. And they really, the driver's feedback, I'll read a bunch of comments, but here it really was. Daniel Suarez, after practice, the car is very bad in traffic, probably even worse than before. On a positive note, he said that the tires seem to fall off a little bit quicker than before. After the first Cup Series practice with the revisited short track package, Martin Truex Jr. says the car felt the exact same as last fall and was still terrible in traffic. Tyrannic says the car felt exponentially worse in traffic during practice, which is not good because the new package was supposed to do the opposite. Chase Hill, after practice, says he felt so little difference with the package he forgot NASCAR made any changes until they were talking about it after the session. William Byron, after practice, says he felt no difference with the new package and says when he would get within two or three car lengths of someone, he get super tight and couldn't get any closer unless he had a two to three lap tire advantage. He says he couldn't pass. Danny Hamlin at practice says the package may be a little bit better in traffic, but otherwise he couldn't tell any difference with the car compared to last year. That said, he said his team made some huge setup changes from last year. So I can read all those driver responses. A lot of it says there has, looks like there has been no improvement. It might actually be worse. The whole goal was in traffic. These cars would get, they could get, get to the back of these cars, but they couldn't pass. Dirty air was so bad. The air would, it would get aerotight. It was bad. You just couldn't. The, the, the slower car could just block you, took away your air. And they're trying to get rid of that. And it looks like they haven't really gained anything from this. And it just stinks because NASCAR, this is the third year, and, and now we're, it doesn't seem that we're really going anywhere now. They're running out of options, man. And it stinks because I want this package to improve, and I think everyone's sending it again. Horsepower. Um, when Denny Hangler was talking about the whole air blocking, because that's what people will do if a car comes up to you, you just air block them. If you let off the throttle, that will affect your ability to air block someone. I also think shifting is a big deal. If a driver is making a mistake now, it doesn't matter. You drive up, let's say you get too hot in the turn, you drive up the track. Well, you just downshift. You keep the momentum. People are so, and the, and the speeds are like with intents of each other. So there's not a big gap in speed. So that's also the thing. The cars are much tighter. I mean, that's what NASCAR wants. That was the whole goal. They want to keep the racing tighter. They don't want it to spread out, right? But also, I think it's going to hurt your, as a, when a new fan comes and watches and they see a car drive up to someone's back bumper, but then they can't pass because the arrow or the car's air block, and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, that's also going to hurt your overall TV. Fans are going to get mad, going to get confused why they can't pass. They may find it competitive. They may still find it interesting because it's tight racing, but it's still not having, the faster car isn't getting around a slower car because of freaking arrow. Okay? And we're talking about short track, man. You know, they're going 80 mile an hour. Now, this is, to me, not the most true test. I think Phoenix isn't the best overall choice when it comes to short track because it's, it's a mile long. I think when we get to Martinsville, Richmond, those more true short tracks, mile and a half. I think that's where we'll see if it really makes any difference. There's a positive, though, with Daniel Suarez. He said that the tire did wear, and that's, I think, one thing NASCAR is going. They figured it on tire to get a softer tire to help wear. That hopefully could help. My opinion, after I think we got once we go through a couple of races here in the short track package, I think we, if we don't see improvement, a big improvement, then we really got to look at this horsepower thing. We got to up it up because unless they're going to go and say, we're going to take the entire diffuser off because I need to start the next step. But at least we have a tire that is wearing. That's, um, that's one thing I'll say that is the one positive out of all this negative from this package. So you break this race down, stage one, 60 laps, stage two, 125 laps, last stage, 127 laps, total 312 miles, 500 kilometers, something like that. It's not 500 miles. The, thing, the, the track's a mile long, so it should be really 312 miles. Uh, but this race is going to be exciting. Uh, races out 
3.30 Eastern on Fox. Uh, we know the past four winners when the next-gen car has been part of NASCAR. Chase Briscoe won the opening race in this car. The, he won the fall race, the winter race, excuse me. And then Joey Nagano won the championship race, that ended up winning the championship, so he won that race. And then winning by won the winter race last year. And the dominant race, probably Kyle Harvick should have won that race. And then most recently, Ross Chastain taking home the championship race win last year. Was not in the championship. Ryan Willing won the championship, but was really, really competitive. I don't I don't think he had the fastest car all race, but he did that arrow blocking job on Ryan Blaney and was able to stay out in front. Look, man, the Hendrick cars have been fast here. And but the Team Penske cars have shown that they've been fast here too. Joe and the guy has one here, and he's was fastest in practice. So I think he's fast, but you know he was on the pole over at Las Vegas and didn't have that overall speed. I know that's two different type of tracks, but it was like right off the bat he got passed in, in a couple of laps. So I need to see that long run speed too. And we did see a little bit of that from Logano, but it's only 50 minutes. Um, once we get in that you know 60, 70, 80 in that run, that's where I think we'll, we'll see the dominant cars. I think I don't think you know with the bad practice and whenever how qualifying goes, I expect with qualifying to see the top dogs move to the front. They'll qualify where they need to qualify. I don't think practice is as big. It's a sign, but I think the, the, the guys are way too smart. Engineers are way too smart. They're going to get their cars dialed in for this race. Um, and Toyotas are fast. They were, they were fast in practice, and that's why I, where I see it. Joe Gibbs is going to be fast, 23-11. Legacy Miller Club, that's fine. We're, we're really starting to see that Legacy Miller Club switch to Tier 1 support, working especially at this track. Eric Jones was at this test, so that's probably where you're seeing that. They were able to take the stuff they learned from this test, probably, and ease in this from their setups, and that also helped with the 42 car. So that's where you're seeing that. I believe the Toyotas were the fastest in this group. I'm, I'm interested to see where the Fords rack up. There wasn't many Fords or Chevrolets. It was Toyota dominating top 10 for practice. I'll be excited to see how the Fords rebound. They're a lot more spread out in, in this practice session. Um, the, the, the short tracks were the, the strongest feed for the Fords. They weren't as uh, lacked, and they lacked the aerodynamics, and that was at the big, fast tracks. And here, short tracks, that's not as big of a deal. Um, so I'm excited to see how they, I'm going to see if, if if his speed holds up for Joey Nagano if he gets the pole. Um, but I'll look at my race picks and my race winners. I believe the Toyota. I believe the Toyota's going to be fast. And I'm going right off the bat, going with Christopher Bell. It was at this test, like I said. I think it's going to be fast. He had some redemption on this track. Came up short. Blew a brake rotor. And in this day, he had a strong car in that race. I think he could have been up there competing with Blaney for that championship if that didn't happen. But it happened, and it killed his day. I expect Christopher Bell to be fast. He had some good 10-lap average. I don't know when he was, top 5, top 10, and 10-lap average. So he has some good speed there. Hopefully that long run speed stays around. And I expect Christopher Bell to be up there at the end competing for a win. So he might pick. For this weekend's race at Phoenix Raceway. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Racing at 3.30 Eastern on Fox. Looking forward to it. Besides that, thank you guys for watching. Give me your picks. Let me know what you think about the short track package. What drivers have been saying. What do you think they need to do to fix it? Besides that, I keep saying this freaking besides that. Thanks for watching. Bye.